terminal alkynes can function as weak acids if you react them with a very strong base. So something like sodium amide. So this NH2 minus over here came from Na plus NH2 minus so sodium amide, which is a very strong base. And so if the amide anion functions as a base, right, a lone pair of electrons in this nitrogen is going to take this proton right here. This is the acidic proton on, alka on terminal alkynes. And that leaves these electrons in here to kick off onto your carbon. So if I take NH2 minus, and that picks up an H plus, well, that would form NH3, right? So now I have nitrogen with three hydrogens attached to it and one lone pair of electrons. So when sodium amide functions as a base, it forms ammonia as its product. What is our other product, right? So we had our carbon triple bonded to another carbon with an R group here, and then lone pair of electrons on this carbon, right? So these electrons right here were the electrons in this bond, right? So those electrons in there moved onto that carbon. That gives this carbon a negative one formal charge like that. So we form a carb anion here, also called an alkanion anion for this portion, right? So this is an alkanide anion, a carb anion here. It's a relatively stable conjugate base because the electrons, right, these two electrons here are housed in an sp hybridized orbital, which has a lot of s character to it, so it's relatively small. So those, neg those negatively charged electrons are held a little bit more closely to the positively charged nucleus of this carbon here. So that somewhat stabilizes the conjugate base, which is the reason why a terminal alkyne can function as an acid. So once we've formed our alkanide anion, we can use that alkanide anion to do an alkylation reaction. So let's go ahead and redraw that alkanide anion here. So I'm going to draw this portion, this R group over here. And then we have our carbon triple bonded to another carbon, right? A negative charge on this carbon on the right here. And this can now function as a nucleophile, right? So a negatively charged anion can function as a nucleophile. And if we react this alkanide anion with an alkyl halide, let's go ahead and draw an alkyl halide here. So I'm going to put hydrogen there, and I'll put my halogen over here on the right. So put my lone pairs of electrons. Let's draw on one R group right here, and then a hydrogen over here. So here is my alkyl halide. And if you react a strong nucleophile with an alkyl halide that is that is not very sterically hindered, right? This is a primary alkyl halide right here. You're going to get an SN2 reaction. So think about this being an SN2 reaction. We have an alkyl halide, which has a polarized bond between the carbon and the halogen, right? So the halogen is more electronegative. It's going to pull the electrons and the bond between it and carbon closer to itself. So this halogen ends up being partially negative. This carbon, therefore, will be partially positive like that. So we have an electrophile, right? This carbon right here is partial positive charge. It wants electrons. And of course, our nucleophile has those electrons. So the lone pair of electrons on our carbon can attack our electrophile, right? So nucleophile attacks electrophile. And an SN2 mechanism, remember, is a concerted, it's a concerted mechanism, meaning the nucleophile attacks the electrophile at the same time your leaving group is leaving here. So these electrons are going to kick off onto your halogen. So let's go ahead and draw the product. Right, so now we would have an R group, carbon triple bonded to another carbon. And now this is bonded to yet another carbon. So we formed a carbon-carbon bond here in this reaction. And then this hydrogen is up here. Right, this R group is still here coming out at us. And then the hydrogen going away from us like that in space. And then we have our halogen over here right, with now four lone pairs of electrons, a negative one formal charge. It is stable on its own as an anion like that. So this is an alkylation reaction, right? We put an alkyl group onto our alkyne, right? So our, our alkyl group consisted of, right, this carbon and whatever the, this R group is here. And we formed a new carbon-carbon bond. So we alkylated our alkyne. Let's look at an example of an acid-base reaction followed by an alkylation. All right, so let's uh, let's start with acetylene. Right, so the simplest alkyne. So we have carbon triple bonded to another carbon, and then two hydrogens on either side. And if we react that with sodium amide here, 
So we know sodium amide being a strong base, right? If we use uh, one molar equivalent, it's going to take off one of these acidic protons, right? So let's say it's the proton on the right here. And so we're going to lose that proton, right? So we're going to uh, leave those two electrons behind on this carbon, making this carbon negatively charged. And then the positively charged sodium ion is going to interact with that negatively charged carbanion like that. So that's, uh, that's the first reaction, formation of your alkanide anion. And then if you want to do an alkylation, right, it's a separate reaction. You take this, and let's, uh, let's react it with uh, ethyl bromide, so CH3CH2Br. Right, and if you think about what's going to happen, the lone pair of electrons on the carbon, right, it's going to attack this carbon, the one that's bonded to your halogen like that. The halogen's going to leave, and you're going to put this alkyl group onto your alkyne, right? So you're going to end up with an ethyl group on your alkyne. So let's go ahead and draw that. All right, so we have hydrogen and then carbon triple bonded to another carbon. And then we just have to put our our alkyl group on there, so a CH2, CH3, like that. So we've alkylated our alkyne. This is a very useful reaction for organic synthesis. All right, so let's, uh, let's, let's take the molecule we just made and let's make something else with it. So if I, if I took this, all right, let me go ahead and redraw it over here. So if I took this alkyne, all right, so we just formed this, and let's react it. That's for two steps. Let's first react it with our base again. So we let's use sodium amide right here. And in our second step, we'll react with a primary alkyl halide. So let's go ahead and draw a primary alkyl halide here. So that is our molecule. So we think to ourselves, what happens? I have a strong base. I still have an acidic proton left on my alkyne, right? So the proton over here on the left. So that's what the base is going to do. The base is going to take that proton, forming a negatively charged carb anion, an alkanide anion. And then that, that anion is going to be our nucleophile for an SN2 reaction. So when you're thinking about it, right, these electrons in here that are going to be on that carbon, giving a negative one formal charge, are going to come all the way over here and attack this carbon and attack attach all of this alkyl group to our, to our carbon. So let's go ahead and draw the products of that. We're going to have our benzene ring. So let's go ahead and draw our benzene ring here. So let's put in our electrons going around my benzene ring. And then on that benzene ring is a CH2, right? So that CH2, the CH2 is the red one that we marked right here. And this is the alkyl group that gets put onto your alkyne. Right, so let's just go ahead and finish drawing our alkyne here. So we have now our triple bond, right? Carbon triple bonded to to another carbon, and then our ethyl group, right? So CH two CH three. So you'll see in in later videos how we use the acidity of a terminal alkynes to alkylate when we do a few different synthesis problems.